Hi, I'm John Zombro, director of the Lifetime Athlete and coach of the Training Tribe, here with a programming update for T2 members. If you're not yet a member of the Tribe and you like the concepts of athletic fitness and athletic longevity, check out Training Tribe at thelifetimeathlete.com. This month, starting on March 29th, 2021, we're actually going into April, and that's the third and final month of our strength oriented block. And we're shifting things a bit because now we've got a new training split. We're going into a full body split, doing full body resistance or strength training three times per week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we'll be utilizing a general conditioning um, routine, which includes aspects of endurance and aerobic training, agility, and some other fun endeavors. How the, the month is going to work is we're going to set up and establish a workout A1, A2, and A3, and those will be the resistance training sessions. Then each week we'll have a different B1 workout, which is our general conditioning um, experience. So I'm not going to waste any of your time. We're going to get right into the exercise demonstrations and we can go through and look at each of those specific routines, the A1, A2, A3, and the B1, and provide some cues and pointers. Okay, you amazing, wonderful, magnificent tribe beast. Here we go. This is workout A1. There are six exercises that we're going to review and I'll do them in order and you have all the information on how to perform them in your member programming document. Okay, so we begin with what we call a medicine ball rainbow tap and you can use any weighted object that you have. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a rainbow and I'm going to arc up, down to a tap, and back, and I'll repeat that, counting each side as one repetition per the member programming document. Once that's completed, you go into your old school setup, and we're going to do this with a very specific technique. That is to anchor the feet. You can use your sandbag. I'm going to show you a dumbbell option today. And then the trick with performing this, this exercise optimally is to Lock up everything first, then keeping your hands in front, just do this motion as your sit up. So this is actually a very back or spine friendly way to do that movement. Once you go into the primary or main component, we've got the two major lifts and movement patterns. First of all, we're going to do a head supported bent row and that can be performed using any chair and a sheet or towel that you have available. You're going to square up and support your forehead then perform the row and I'm not sure my microphone will work optimally so I'll just show you that. And that's the form for the Head support bent row. Now we're going to a unilateral exercise where you get to use your kettlebell or dumbbell and your bench or stability ball and do a seated unilateral one arm press from like a rack position. So that's kind of how this is going to look, where you're really pushing up as though you're going through a pipe or cylinder with that arm as it is raising. Having completed that movement, we go to the final two exercises, which are the walking lunge. And the walking lunge is performed thusly. By the way, you'll notice I'm using very light weights in my demonstrations because I'm recording this very early in the morning and I don't know that my warm up was adequate. So, walking lunge, basic technique. Hopefully, you won't have obstacles to move around as I am doing in my demonstration but I think everyone's been doing this exercise for quite a while and your form is exemplary. Now, the final move requires a bit of explanation or demonstration. It's a single arm or one arm deadlift exercise and we alternate arms as we do the movement. So how I'm gonna do this very specific, 
I'm going to hinge down, free hand is out in space, and do the one arm deadlift. Then I replace the weight, stand up, and switch arms. So this would be one rep. This would be two reps, and so on. It's a great movement that I think you're going to enjoy. So that, guys, is workout A1. And see if you can get this one time per week. And you're going to love it. We're going to move on to workout A2. All right, guys, here we go with workout A2. That's the second full body resistance training experience that we have this week. Uh, you're going to start off with some basic kettlebell swings. And again, the technique is really just to, to stiffen from the hips to the wrists and lock it up as you do the movement. So you are controlling the implement and it's not controlling you, kind of swinging you around. I think you get that picture fairly simple. Now, from there, we go into, let me check this to make sure I've got it, the sideline uh, tubing pull down. So kind of doing like a vertical pulling motion, but now we're doing it in sideline, one arm at a time. What I've done, I'm gonna end up turning my back to you, so I apologize is I've got my band anchored, and you can anchor your band anywhere, and you get enough tension on it that you can pull with good resistance. I had to double mine to accomplish that. So here we go. You get some tension on the band, and then I'll lay down in the sideline or fetal position, and then I get to work on my pulling motion in this manner. Again, hopefully the microphone is staying with me. Thanks for you bearing with me as well. When you're done your reps, you can simply roll over to the other side to complete that motion. Then you go into the main or primariness of our uh, workout A2. And this is going to be a close grip bench press. Now you can use either a barbell or a dumbbell to perform the movement. But you're going to use essentially a narrow arm path, which alters how you're using your pushing muscles, including your pecs, delts, and triceps. If it's a barbell, you know, you just be close like that and doing so. Either one is fine, whichever you have available or, pref or prefer to perform this movement. Okay, from there, a close grip bench press, we then move right into a unilateral kettlebell rack squat. So you're going to use a board for a heel lift or a ramp if you have one and then go into a rack position and this is nice because it gives you that asymmetrical load which you get more trunk activation to balance and control. Try and go ATG if possible and then after halfway in your rep scheme that you have in the programming document you'll just switch to the other side to continue performing the lift. That moves us to our accessory motions, which are going to be super set. It's kind of an arm pump situation. And the first movement is a classic tricep extension known as a skull crusher. Now, obviously, don't crush your skull, but just lower down to kind of the hairline, if you have one, or the top of the scalp. And how that's performed is simply to be on your bench with this start position and then arcing down to create the lift. And so you'll notice the difference between that and the bench press. Then you would immediately superset with some spider curls. And those are exciting because you're using an incline row position, but you're performing a curl while doing so. I'm gonna just try not to lay on my microphone here. So. Thanks for bearing with me. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be okay. So I'm here, and now I'm really harnessing gravity in an advantageous manner to work these elbow flexors. And I think you'll get a kick out of that. So in the superset, you obviously quickly combine both those motions, and then you take your break. And that is workout A2. We'll move on to A3. Alrighty then, we're at workout A3. That's the third of the resistance training opportunities for this week. 
We're going to start off very basic with some simple push-ups. I think everybody knows their technique, but I'll just give my, my version of a demonstration. And I'm just going to try to uh, stay fairly straight, touch all the way down, and back it up. And that constitutes reasonably good form, which we all probably have mastered. From there, we go to jumping jacks. And so what I'm going to do in uh, my demo is I'm going to hold on to my microphone so it doesn't uh, bounce all over the place. But your jumping jacks simply done on a four count. So that would be like one, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, and so on as you get the picture. That activates you. That's the prep. And then you go into the full body work, which are combo moves, probably some of my favorites. We're going to perform a step up with an overhead press. And so what that's going to look like, I'm just going to move this a bit, just to give you guys a little bit better view, is I'm going to start off in a capture rack position with the dumbbells. Then I will step up and press up. Now obviously my ceiling height uh, means I should probably be doing this in the garage or outside. Many of you may have to do the same thing. And then you'll alternate to the other leg step and press. So that is a wonderful movement. Works full body anti-gravity pressing or pushing, which is a wonderful pattern. Okay, the next primary lift is another combo. Again, one of my favorites. It's going to be a deadlift and hang clean combination. Um, you don't necessarily need to have blocks that are as high as these, but this is what I had for the demonstration. One option is to take a large pair of dumbbells, place a towel over it, and then put your dumbbells second pair on that, or stack up some boards or books or use center blocks. Doesn't matter, but we just want your dumbbells to be at least a few inches off the ground because that enables you to then have an easy uh, first phase of the lift so you bring your weight up. Now the clean is not a strict curl where you just power the weight, but instead, it's a load and explode or Olympic lift variation. So you're going to compress slightly and swing weights up to catch. And that's why you want to use a heavier weight for this movement so that you can optimize your benefits or adaptations from it. Finally, we go to the accessory moves, and there are two just like in the rest of the program. And these are isometric holds. And so you're going to do your iso lunge pattern also known as a split stand squat. So you want to just get a good pull here, tighten up and hold, and you've got the times in your dock. Obviously you can do both legs. And then the other isometric move kind of works uh, the upper body and core in conjunction. It's hanging from your overhead bar, pull up bar, and then holding the knees in a bent position. So that would have you here, and then holding here for time. And I think you'll find this incredibly zesty and enjoyable. So thanks guys, as always, those are the A workouts, one, two, and three, this being three. Now we're gonna move into taking a look at the B workout, B1, there's only one this week, and it's a general conditioning experience which combines some aerobic and circuit training, emphasis on mobility and athleticism. And here we go. Oh, great ones. I salute you. Okay, the first two activation exercises of four in workout B1 are going to work on that posterior chain, specifically the hamstrings, calves, glutes, and back. And so what you're going to do is use your bench, and then you're going to get down into a position where you're on your back, supine, and you've got the balls of the feet on the edge or corner of the bench. That's a great position from which to then do that single leg bridge and you split your reps obviously between one side and the other. Once that's complete, you can shake it out if you need a break and then you're going to do some leg switching while holding the bridge. So this is a bit more challenging because you come up and you're holding your bridge and then you're switching the legs like so. And this is just a fabulous way to ready your posterior chain for some of the things we're going to be doing outside in the future. Two more activation moves to go. We've got a uh, lateral vertical hop combo. So 
I think I'll just see if my mic will just hang on. But what you're going to be doing is in your skater position, you're going to laterally hop, and then vertical, then to the other side, like so. And you can do this with more gusto than I'm doing in my demonstration if you prefer to. Okay, finally, the activation uses a tubing trunk twist. Anyway, you can anchor your tubing. It can be uh, high, medium, or low. It doesn't really matter for this move. But what we want to do is get some tension on, nice firm grip, and then use an athletic pivot to do a partial twist and drive it off from here. And so it's one of my favorite and better ab exercises actually and uh, wonderful for athletic trunk control. Once you're fully activated, you then go into the main component, which is kind of a circuit training model in which you're going to be doing reps or rounds of three minutes of your prefer preferred aerobic or cardio exercise. So that could be your bike, your treadmill, your elliptical, your rower, or calisthenics, or jogging in place, or outside, other things as well. Does not really matter. You just pick what you have available and love. And then after each of the three minutes, which have different intensities in your member programming document, you're going to be treating yourself to 10 reps of three different exercises. So, so those three exercises are the sandbag thruster. And as you know, the thruster is pretty much a full front squat with an overhead press. And we do our here at TLA very uh, momentous, uh, piston-like. And so you're going to hit the bottom and then power up out of it. And that's your thruster. So you get 10 of those. Then you take your bench and you're going to do two exercises. You're going to do the reverse hyper, which is a reverse back hyper extension. So the way to do this is you get on your bench right where your body hinges or breaks. That's going to be for comfort. And you hold on. I like to keep my head down and my back really flat, but for the demo with the mic, I'm just going to hang here. And then from there, this is the movement. Complete that one. And then you'll go to the partial leg raise and lower. And so this is personalized, of course. You're going to do this in the way that works for you best. So hold on your bench, legs up, slightly bent, and lower and raise through the range of motion that again feels right to you. 10 reps of everything. And you also end up doing, I'm gonna double check, I think it's seven rounds totally. Uh, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five. Um, no, there's six rounds, the bonus there. Um, and that's, that's good, that's probably not the intensity. And then to finish out this routine, we're gonna do a jump progression and we're gonna perform it safely. So no matter what level you're at, you can use jumping as a training tool and get all the magnificent benefits of youthful elasticity and athleticism. So I'll set that up as we're talking. And this represents one level. It might be considered entry level and that's not a negative, but just a board that you have available so you have a small height. Next up would be someone who has anything else that represents a slightly larger height. And we can just keep going up, as you can see, with how I'm creating my demonstration area. And we're only going to do five reps of four different jumps. And we're doing them in singles. So in other words, it's not continuous. You do a rep, and then you rest and recover do another. That's really the secret to high quality movement with these plyometric types of exercises. So the first one is our box jump. And so if I use this, I'm just jumping onto something. That's all that a box jump is. Jump up and step down. I would load, counter movement, jump. And maybe I won't go through everything, but I'll just show you kind of how that looks like on the different heights. And I knew I'd lose my mic a few times doing this. And then this one, um, we're here. That's as high as I can use to get my ceiling height. 
But if you have higher objects available and you can go outside where it's safe, by all means do. Now, that's box jump. That's the first of the four. The next one is what we call a depth drop progression. So a depth drop is just where you step off and you stick the landing. So sometimes I'll call this a drop and stick. And I think I'm going to be in the camera for most of these, but in order to make sure, I'm going to turn backwards and show you that. And so here, even though I'm on this small height, it still counts. I'm going to step off and stick the landing. Then I'll be up a little higher. You see how this works? Boom, stick that landing. Again, you can go up higher again, stick the landing, and then lastly, of course, you've got this one. Oh, good. So again, just five reps. Now, you move from there into what I call, or actually what is called, the, the, the depth jump. So we had a box jump, we had a depth drop, now we have a depth jump. And so what this does is it goes off of a lower height onto a higher height. So you get that stretch shortening cycle in the middle or amortization phase, which is what that's known as. Um, I am going to clean up my area for your benefit. And I'll just use two of my heights again. The only key with the depth jump here is that you uh, go from lower to higher. It's actually designed to work most effectively that way. So this is a great way for me to load my springs coming off this height and then stick the landing up on the next box. So we'll see what the mic does. And that's one rep. I'll do one more just so you feel safe with the technique. So it's, it's pretty rapid conversion on that counter movement. And that is how we perform our depth jumps. The final thing that you do is just break out the jump rope or the invisible jump rope. And we're just working on that nice staccato function at the ankle. Uh, strengthening the foot, uh, almost bulletproofing, if I can use that term, the plantar fascia, the Achilles tendons, making you a better athletic force manager, force producer, force convert, force transfer, all the same. So that's B1. It's fun. You're awesome. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for being a member of the tribe. And do get ready because we're going to start taking some of our mojo outside, outdoors, parks, playgrounds, tracks, and backyards. And so I'll tell you what to do with your equipment to get that ready to take out and also recruit a few more members so that you have a local team of tribesters wherever you're at to get the most out of your training endeavor. Hey, until next time, this is Coach Jay-Z. Thanks for being with me, and I'll catch you next time.